my name is Jasmine, I'm an illustrator, and uh, welcome to my channel. So now that I'm working on the concept side of my medieval comic, Girl Knight, it's time to finalize the character designs of the main knights in the story. And part of their conceptualizing is also doing their shields, which is why I have a few research books to go through to figure out what possible combinations of designs we can create to represent each knight's heraldic shield. Heraldic stuff is extremely complicated and there is no way I will ever become an expert or really grapple with the strange, very strange tradition of heraldic anything basically because there's a lot of symbolism and history tied to all of it. Oh, that's still really hot. But I figured I should try to do my best with some form of research and then we can dive into the actual uh, concept art stuff. I've honestly haven't been vlogging much during this weird phase of the comic making process because it's been mostly just exploring different ideas and aesthetics and uh, visually it's just me pouring through Pinterest and books don't really have much to say on it because I don't really know what I'm doing. So I'm still trying to figure out how to make this weird phase in the comic making process as structured as possible. At least I know for today, I need to figure out what these shields are gonna look like as well as just figure out what these characters are finally going to look like. I've been sketching their faces there we go. I've been sketching their faces and clothing for a few weeks now. So I'm getting kind of a not so clear but some type of an idea towards what direction these characters should be going towards in terms of their designs. Anyways, now that I've explained what exactly the plan is for today, let's jump into continuing the research on shields using the Dictionary of Heraldry, which I got at a uh, used bookstore. And this one, which is just visual references. I wanted to know more of the context of shield designs. So this is much more the context and text stuff. It says Dictionary. It really is like a dictionary. Like, if you look up griffin or lion, it's gonna give you a definition of the use of lions and griffiths in shield designs. And also just what kind of symbolism these types of animals represent. I'm more than halfway through reading it. There's a lot of terms that I'm skipping through because there's terms that are defining actual guilds or orders and none of that really pertains to my comic so I'm just skipping through it. What I'm reading are just the basic things like usage of certain animals because I'm also thinking maybe an animal can be represented by each knight. I'm not sure um, but I do want to just go through this book finally now that I'm in this stage of the comic development stuff. I think if uh, once I finish going through this book I'll have a vague idea of just shields in general and I mean general because like I said I think it's uh, the the world of heraldry it is such a complex different weird world full of a lot of history I couldn't even begin to really grapple with but uh, for now I'm just gonna have to approach it as an amateur and just do my best. Just literally just designing the shields of the main characters. That is it. I'm drinking apple tea. Nothing special like celestial seasonings. I I wanted to get a non-caffeine tea because it's already 4.30. Had to work day job today so I'm quite tired but it's too late to drink caffeine now. But it's never too late to do research. I was wondering about this. So here is an example of one's shield in the context of generational differences. Unfortunately, this is a book using England as an example. 
so I don't have a reference for French ways of doing this, but it still brought some giggles. Here's an example of how many suns you have and all of their different shields. Late in the 1400s, this was starting to be used more often. Um, each of your sons would have a particular symbol to denote that they're obviously your son. But because inheritance is involved, um, the order of how you were born is important. This example is used in Scotland and this is the one that brought giggles because this is by generation. So if you have several different sons, each one's going to have a slightly different variation in your shield. And the son of that son is going to have the same elements but slightly different and so forth and so forth. Uh, to the point where they're after the sixth or seventh generation, the shield is going to look extremely crowded and messy and no longer look elegant or simple. Um, so the this text kind of points out how silly it became. Really, there should be a different way of denoting ancestors. There is clearly need of a new convention, one which is sufficiently flexible to provide greater control over the use of arms without becoming artistically intrusive. So yeah, like, can we denote that these are ancestors without making these look like a hot mess? Also, if you wanted to know the proper term for any design inside of a shield, literally, just the word design, they call it a charge, which is really strange and I still can't get used to that while reading all of these definitions because it just, because it uses that term everywhere. For example, here, instead of saying an armorial design consisting of a figure with five stylized petals, it says an armorial charge. So, very strange way of just saying design, but yeah, now you know. And of course, I decide to talk when the leaf blower guy does his usual thing every week. I just finished flipping through this book. What did I learn, really? I tabbed the collection of designs. I'll definitely be using those for reference, but mostly this book goes through referencing specific guilds and orders, including religious orders, uh, governmental groups in England and Scotland, even New Zealand. Um, so it's for sure not useful for me, um, other than the actual visible listing of designs. I did learn, depending on the order as well as the government body or the country, there might be really strict rules as to what you can incorporate in your own shield or coat of arms. Uh, like you can't use certain stripes or you can't use certain creatures or colors like it can get pretty specific so i learned that luckily because this is a made-up story i get to do whatever i want but it was an interesting read what is next now is going through these to think about what are the main elements or themes that i want to incorporate with each character I do want to design these shields with, um, and I'm probably saying it wrong, it's probably not shields, it's probably like coat of arms or, I don't necessarily understand the, the correct term. Reading this I don't think fully helped in not using improper terms, so if I'm saying it wrong, oh well. But what I'm trying to say is that I do want to be thoughtful in designing the shields for each knight. Um, I, d I would like to tie it in with either their themes or uh, part of their own specific character developments. I'm gonna see if I can tie that in. 
I definitely don't want to spend too much time because this is not primary story stuff. If I can just devote some time today, knock it all out, I should be good to go with that. I'm gonna think about what are the main elements that I want to incorporate in the shield. Then I'm gonna look through this to see how those ideas are put into paper in the past and see if I can pull any inspiration from this list too. Now that I know a little bit of context uh, on how heraldry works, and I say a little bit, I don't know that much, but I know some. Let's see if we can combine these two and then get to drawing some ideas. I got this cute little mini whiteboard um, that I want to paste onto the wall, but unfortunately I realized that there are magnets behind it, so I need to find some type of glue to be able to paste it onto the wall. But this little board, I want it to be my weekly goals list so that I have a a more clear view of what I need to focus on every week. So for this week, these are the three nights that I need to really hone in on their designs and then chapter one's illustration. Those are my four things to do this week. It doesn't look like much, but it is a lot of work and I need to focus on getting it done. So we're gonna leave that little board right there. Um, but if you need to know how many shields I need to do, three of them. Wait a minute, I lied. It's actually four. Whoops. Good morning. It is 7.45. I slept eight and a half hours and I'm still really sleepy. I have not felt like this in forever. I could not get out of bed. Like when Jonathan left, I was still dead in bed. So it's safe to say we're having a really slow morning for some very strange reason. But I don't have day job to do today, so I really would like to finish this vlog, aka do all the character designs today. And like I said, that's a lot of work. Last night, I only got to a little bit of the first character on that list, Boniface, and I really struggled. I did not stay at my desk for very long after the last clip. I just couldn't focus. So, ah, I've been working on this project for more than a year. Uh, I've been working on it full time now for about six months. So I'm starting to recognize the patterns, the cyclical patterns of the highs and lows. I believe I'm entering the low where I feel like this project is not worth investing time in that it is a terrible idea, and that I am not equipped to be telling the story. Uh, will I continue to feel this way? No. Uh, inevitably, I will get off of this hill and be extremely inspired to work on this story. I generally just ignore the highs and lows now and just focus on seeing this as almost another day job where if I were be if I were to be hired by a company, this is what I would be working on. It is extremely legitimate. Just because I'm not an, someone else's employee on this doesn't make this any less legitimate of a uh, of an activity. Yeah, that's basically how I justify it in my head, at least. And it tends to work for me, and it'll continue to work for me. I just need to wake up. But I am going through a little bit of a slump. And all that means is that I work a bit slower and that it takes me longer to achieve these types of goals. Um, if I were feeling really good, I would have already woken up at 6 a.m., been happy to listen to music and uh, knocked these concepts out. But because I don't currently believe in my project very much 
I am very, I am dragging my feet and kind of just feeling a little depressed about it. <laughs> but it's okay. I have enough experience in my life to understand what I'm going through and I'm pretty self-aware about it so I don't overthink it. It's not, it's not that big of a deal. This is what gives my life meaning so I'm kind of stuck with this. <laughs> So now that I've explained why the heck I am moving so slow, I'm gonna drink this coffee. I have to walk, hug, feed, feed the dog and the cat, which will be a good break. Hopefully I'll be more awake and then get back to work. So I got the shield design for Boniface. I'm not quite done with all of the outfits that I want to give him throughout the entire story, so I'm not going to check him off the whiteboard list just yet. The second person to do is Rodrigo. He's our Spanish knight. I finally was able to pinpoint like where he could have come from, and so we're going to give him um, the last name de Guzman, which is a noble house in the kingdom of Castilla. Uh, my only... <sighs> the difficulty here though is that if I want to use the de Guzman coat of arms, it would be nice to understand which time period I'm pulling the design from. Here are two that I was able to pull from the internet. No years were given. And I've already browsed through a ton of websites to try to figure out what was their coat of arms in 1415. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not finding that information very easily. And I could spend some more time on it, but is it really important? I, I don't think it's that important. The difference between these two shields is that this one has the loop border. What happened at least what I think happened is that the de Guzman family wanted to associate themselves with the royal family because that is the design for the tower. The tower is a design for the kingdom of Castilla and then the lion is for the kingdom of Leon. Um, however, as I was drawing, as I was drawing this guy's shield, I realized um, in 1415 the union between Castilla and Leon wasn't done until the marriage of Isabel and uh, I already forgot his name oh my god my Spanish history is a little wonky um, but that didn't happen until the second half of the 1400s so I think this design is much later than the period that my comic is taking place so do I just stick to this design or were these two th kingdoms added onto the shield because this family was related to both kingdoms separately is referring to these two kingdoms just saying that they have family in both of them or is it referring to the union of those two kingdoms i'm not sure I could argue that that doesn't matter right now because Rodrigo doesn't come into the story until a few chapters in um, so I do have time to do more research but I really don't want to do any more research on this like I just want to get it done and uh, looking up any medieval Spanish history has been kind of difficult to do on the internet it is uh, way more difficult than looking up French stuff and that already is difficult so yeah so if I can't do any more research on this this is the part that we call creative liberties just for the sake of making the shield interesting and flashy and it would be consistent with Rodrigo's uh, very vain personality I think we're gonna go with this later shield design even if I do have history nerds later on telling me that the shield is way after the time that this story takes place. I think I'll just take 
I'll take the criticism. Like, I don't know what else to do here. So, I think we're done with that one. I'm almost done with my coffee, so it's pretty much time to feed the dog and cat and walk hug. Okay, it is 11.30 to the dot and I finished designing all of the coat of arms for our main knights. I also figured out their outfits for the first chapter and I think I pretty much finalized what they actually look like, their faces. I've been working on designing them for many months. I kind of already had a bunch of versions done um, so it was just a matter of deciding on which versions to settle on so that was taken care of so we can oh I dropped the mark so we can check off four of the five goals for this week that's major you guys so I'm gonna make some more coffee make something to eat and then I have two things to tackle or I have two paths I can work on the illustration for chapter one which is basically the illustration that goes in front of chapter one or I can work on actually drawing chapter one I've, I've been drawing it and working on the thumbnails it's been a slow progress because I haven't quite decided on what the style is going to look like so it's still a very messy, explorative phase for that. And like I mentioned yesterday, vlogging this messy phase is a little difficult because there's no structure and there's no guarantee that by the end of this day or that video, I will have accomplished uh, deciding on a design or anything. So I'm not sure that that even makes sense to put on a video. Or perhaps maybe you don't watch this for the goals, you just watch it to put on the background, which is totally fine. And in that case, I don't have chapter one done yet. As for the verdict on these books, um, this one is about a third useful. Now that I decided on that shield and I got to learn about the background of just heraldry, uh, I don't really think I even really need this anymore. Um, yeah, I do have some tabs, but these tabs are just to to get you to places listing very basic shield designs. So I could pretty much find that information online, um, but it is quite useful to have this in one physical spot. I just don't think I need all of the space to take up my bookshelf. So. Probably, I might donate this book. I don't, I don't think it's super useful. As for this one, what I learned about Coat of Arms is that depending on how they're used or the context of where they're going to be displayed, that Coat of Arms can be different. Crests are generally what you would put on top of a Coat of Arms just to like further drive along the heraldry of that person um, so for example if someone's coat of arms has an eagle uh, then they would display 
another eagle on top of their coat of arms as a decorative function. Crests were also put on top of helmets during tournaments. The helmet that you would use during a tournament is very different from um, one used in battle, and I'm talking about later in the late Middle Ages. Uh, early Middle Ages, the line was pretty blurred between tournaments and actual battle, but once you got to the late Middle Ages, tournaments became its own beast and its own lifestyle and thing. The armor generally used for a tournament was super duper decorative and aesthetic, and so crests were then started to put be put on top of helmets, kind of like this example. And we have helmets from that period um, with holes on the top so that they could place the actual uh, crest on top and that would include like feathers or actual statues, like it, it got pretty uh, decorative. So this is not really useful at this early stage of concept design because uh, chapter one and many many chapters at the beginning of my story isn't going to include a tournament so I don't need to be thinking about what their uh, tournament coat of arms are gonna look like but it will be lots of fun because I get to play around with all the different elements and the symbols surrounding pageantry um, so this will be useful later down the line when I do get to designing the details of the tournament section of my story not super useful right now so that's pretty much it for today's video. Please give it a like. If you're not following me, go ahead and follow me for more medieval comic making content. And I'll see you in the next video.